I was asked to speak in general on how to succeed at a hackathon, uh, how to make the best of a hackathon experience, whether that is a hackathon like Space Apps, where you come in person for a short period of time and work on set challenges, or another hackathon where you might work in person but also be able to do anything you want, um, or hackathons that you participate via the internet, like the Global Code Fest. Um, this is primarily about in-person hackathons, since we're talking about space apps today, but it has a lot of information that you're able to use uh, at other hackathons as well. So, who I am. Um, I have been a hackathon participant, a volunteer, an organizer, a judge. Uh, I went to dozens of hackathons during my uh, career as a computer science student. Um, I used to organize buses of students to travel around to various hackathons, and that was very fun, if very sleepless. Um, I volunteered in a number of hackathons. Um, I am the organizer of Unhackathon, which ran for two years and sought to defy the norms about hackathons. I was also the um, director of operations at Hack and Why and did a number of hackathons through them. So I, I know a little bit about hackathons. Oh, right, I also judged at um, the most last year's museum hackathon I was a judge at, and that was pretty cool. Um, one of the things I care about the most is approaching hackathons in a sustainable way, both in regard to your own well-being and with regard to uh, producing projects that you can then extend if you want to. And I think that's a really important part of space apps. So, yay. Um, so we'll talk about the basic outcomes of what a good hackathon is um, and also what makes a good hackathon project. I'll also talk about, go through sort of a basic hackathon timeline that can be applied to any hackathon with demos at the end, um, and a little bit about what to do with your project at the end. So, basic stuff. Um, what makes a good hackathon experience? Uh, this presentation is covered with words so that I can send it places afterwards, so pardon me for kind of reading my slides a little bit. Um, so at a hackathon, of course, you'll meet people with similar interests, in this case, people who care about space, which is awesome. Um, you'll be able to make something that you're proud of. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to learn new skills and technologies. That's especially important here with all of the APIs that NASA has made available. That might not be something that you had, would have come upon in your day-to-day -day life. So getting the opportunity to work with those things is really exciting and one of the things that makes hackathons truly great. Um, you can also network with people in your field, with mentors. Um, often hackathons have corporate sponsors. You can network with them too. Um, hackathon projects are most successful when the project that you do at the hackathon is something that's really well defined and contained. Um, even if you end up going on to expand upon it, you want to have something that you can have finished enough to demo and feel proud about, and something that doesn't feel like a mess when you leave, because you want to be able to get back into it and uh, keep working on it. It should involve technology you know well, and hopefully also involve something that you'd like to use and learn from. Um, you should also take advantages of the opportunities you might not otherwise have, such as using special APIs or data sets that have mentors attached to them there. Um, bad hackathon projects are big, complicated things that you can't understand or define well, something that you can't actually explain to one another even on your own team. Um, Something that you don't feel personally excited about, um, what I call API salad, which is when people, you know, just take an API and attach it to another API, so you end up with like, you know, Tinder for dogs, or, you know, Uber for Mars, I guess, in this case. Um, Booker Uber. But, um, yeah, so just, just attaching APIs together sort of without a real plan is something that a lot of unsuccessful hackathon projects do. And while it can sometimes look flashy, it doesn't really do anything good for you or for the world. So, like, grow up a little. <laughs> um, so I'm going to present just a short hackathon timeline of how you might want to organize yourself. Um, so before the hackathon, um, meet with your team. Uh, it sounds like most people at Space Apps will already know who their teammates are. Um, or at least somebody who you'd like to work with, even if you end up adding more people to your team later. Um, if you're attending a hackathon with challenges, the way Space Apps is, um, pick one in advance and do some research on it. Um, so most successful teams come to hackathons with at least the germ of an idea. Um, coming with absolutely no idea about what you want to work on, especially with something that might have such a learning curve, 
will really set you back. Um, determine the type of project you'd like to work on. There are, of course, mostly web apps going to be coming out of this, but you might do a hardware app hack, you might do a mobile app. All those things are fair game, right? Cool. Um, start gathering your equipment if it is, in fact, a hardware hack. Uh, at the first Space Apps, we had um, uh, 3D printers available to use, and I remember my team got in on that, and that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Um, so, if you're starting from scratch with something new, like one of these APIs or another tool that you plan on using, start researching it, start trying it out. Um, another important thing for your team is making sure you have the right software before you arrive. A lot of teams get stymied at the beginning because hackathon Wi-Fi can sometimes be a bit iffy, and everyone trying to download the Android SDK at the same time, not so fun. So if you have the opportunity to get your stuff in advance, to download data sets, to download SDKs, do it early. Um, figure out a plan for version control and code sharing. Uh, just like in real life, using Git or Bitbucket or anything like that is a great idea. Um, working with code in an organized way is the right thing to do, and it'll allow you to work with your code again later in the future. Um, if there are prizes related to using certain data sets, look them up. Um, see if you can use them in interesting ways. That applies to our challenges here a little bit, um, and there may also be um, teams there to mentor with their own, with their own APIs, right? Cool. Um, remember to start small, distilling your idea into a basic proof of concept that you can then demo. Um, always a good reminder, everything is going to take more time than you think it is. Downloading things is going to take more time. Going through tutorials is going to take more time than you expect. Git is going to take huge amounts of time, and you won't know why. Um, so build in extra time for everything. Um, plan to leave with something you can demo, even if it is a set of mock-ups. Make it a set of mock-ups that you feel good about, something that you feel like you can expand upon in the future. Uh, you won't feel motivated to continue if you don't have something that feels a little bit complete to start. Um, most hackathon projects don't go anywhere after the hackathon, so it's a great goal to produce something that you will want to come back to. Um, for you, play around with the necessary technologies. You've decided on what your skills are on the team. Work with the things that you're planning on using. Um, and start following things like Space Apps Online, because I imagine they'll be posting a whole lot of information about the challenges, about the data sets, about the location that you might want to find out more about. Um, if you're a student before the hackathon, make sure you're uh, ahead on all of your homework and projects. You will be exhausted. Space apps will run all night. Actually, even if you're not a student, make sure you're ahead. <laughs> you will be a vegetable at work on Monday. Uh, get a good night's sleep. Um, pack a sweatshirt or a blanket or a sleeping bag. Uh, a lot of venues are really cold at night. I remember our first time at Space Apps, we were in the space wing of the Natural History Museum, and they don't heat it at night. And so we were all like shivering in our seats, and our fingers were getting stiff, and you'd see the security guards walking around in these big parkas. And they said, what's up with that? And they're like, yeah, they turned the heat off. What are you doing? <laughs> so uh, yeah, it gets cold sometimes. And bonus, if you bring a sleeping bag, you can, you can sleep in it, and you can sit in it, and that's awesome. Uh, really basic stuff, but really useful. So once you get to the hackathon, uh, remember that it's a marathon, not a sprint, or at least it's a 5K. Um, keep your code organized and clean. Um, the last thing you want to be doing is spending the last two hours frantically squashing bugs instead of polishing up your demo. Um, and you also want to be able to expand upon your hack once you are finished. Um, be smart about your expectations and about the scope of your project. I've brought this up like five times already, but I'm going to bring it up again. Don't do something that is completely out of your range for the beginning. Plan on how to expand it, but think of that proof of concept as something that you'll be able to demo, something you'll be excited about later. Um, take good care of yourself and your team. I'm talking mentally and physically and emotionally. Uh, I've seen, you know, teams can get really close and bond really well at a hackathon, but they can also end up not friends anymore. <laughs> um, don't forget to use the resources that hackathons offer. I'll go on about that again in a minute. And of course, remember that you are there to learn and to have fun, and that will make everything better. 
So, uh, quick notes on Hacking Healthy. Um, a lot of hackathons provide a whole bunch of snacks and energy drinks and all sorts of exciting things. Uh, know your own body and remember that you will be demoing the next day. So if you absolutely burn yourself out and keep yourself up on massive amounts of caffeine overnight, you will probably crash the next day and you will not enjoy your demos, especially since they're all the way at 5 p.m. Um, if you get restless, take a walk. Uh, that can really help your thought process and it's also good for you. Um, make sure you are caring for your teammates and making sure that nobody is really stuck. Um, I really support pair programming in the middle of the night because um, it keeps you on track. It allows you to get easy bugs uh, stopped before they happen. Um, it can make sure that everybody's on the same page as you work. So pair programming at night, totally fun thing to do, totally a good idea. Um, at the opening ceremony, so now we're going sort of timeline-wise here, um, listen to API demos, listen to discussion of the challenges, see if there's anything that inspires you that you hadn't thought of previously. You don't have to, you don't have to go with the idea you came with. If there's something that you come up with, go for it. Um, if you're working with something new, write down the contact information for anybody who's a mentor in that field or uh, the uh, information for documentation online so that you can easily access it later. Uh, when you start, find a good space to hack with your team. Um, plan out a spot to have a nap later if you'd like to. Um, if you know other teams, it's often nice to hack near them because you can help each other and keep each other's spirits up. But if you don't know anybody, you can make friends with the teams near you and learn from them. Uh, once you begin hacking, um, how I've seen most successful teams do this. Uh, by the end of the first hour of the hackathon, um, you have processed everything that came in during the opening ceremonies. You have solidified your idea or come up with a new idea based on what you've learned. You've done a little bit of testing. Oh, okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Everybody dance. So if the lights go out during the hackathon, it means you need to get up and take a walk. Um, anyway, so you've talked about, you've talked with your team about your idea, you have a solid plan. Um, if, you haven't out, if you haven't done this already, um, draw out the implementation, figure out what the architecture is going to be, divide the roles, um, try to figure out what technology you're going to need to learn and whether that's feasible. Figure out the architecture because if you have that in place when you start, you'll do really well. And if you have fudged things in your head or ignored parts of the problem, it's not gonna go well later. By the end of the first quarter of the hackathon, since hackathons have different amounts of time, I'm kind of dividing this as, as parts instead of hours at this point. By the end of the first quarter, um, your project should be understood by everybody. Everyone should understand the architecture you're planning on. Um, everyone should have set up their development environment. You should have set up your code sharing. Uh, you should start with your version control, of course. And the plan should be ready to go. You should all be starting coding on your own particular part, and you should understand what part that is. You should also know what the end goal is going to be and the steps that it's going to take to get there, what people are going to need to work with whom, which parts depend on others. You need to know what the plan is there. By the end of the first half of the hackathon, your most basic functions should be in place. If you're working with uh, a data set and doing some calculations with it, your algorithm should be done. Your, uh, you should be able to be pulling from the data set. You should be doing that kind of thing. Uh, by now, you've probably discovered that something was harder than you expected, and you're having to reroute a little bit, and that's OK. You still have time. Uh, make sure at this point, when it is often in the middle of the night, not to get stuck stewing in your own seat. Um, pair program if you are stuck. Get help from someone around you, whether it's a teammate, another person on a team, a mentor, an organizer. If you're completely stuck, uh, see if you need to step back and change your goals because you've got time to do that. By the time three quarters of the hackathon is over, I recommend having uh, you're now adding more features onto your basic functionality. You've got something that you feel pretty good about demoing. Um, at this point, you should be figuring out what your stable version for demoing is going to be and nail it down on GitHub. 
then you can roll back to it if you end up with problems later. This enables you to be more adventurous in the last quarter, um, and we'll give you something to demo if an adventure perhaps goes awry. Um, don't forget to do testing. Testing is important. Yay. Um, start thinking about what your demo is going to look like. Um, how are you going to present this? You, at this point, you probably know how finished you're going to be with the product, what it's going to look like by then, and you're going to adjust your expectations of how your demo is going to look. Are you going to need to have slides around it to talk about what the future of it is? Yeah, you might, and so start putting that together. Um, this is also a good opportunity to get some rest because you want to be good for demos. In the last two hours, I recommend not writing any new code. Fix things you need to fix. Get a stable version ready to demo. Uh, if there are features you didn't have time for and they're in your head, write them down because you may want them later. Uh, make sure everything that you need to demo, like mock user accounts, uh, mock data, slides, is ready to go for your demo. Um, try to give yourself a full hour where you're not working on any code to get ready for your demo. Practice it in front of each other. Figure out what you're going to be saying to all these people who have no idea what you've been doing for the past 30 hours. Um, and then submit your hack, whether it's on DevPost or somewhere else. What are, what are y'all using? They do their own thing. Submit your hack on the own thing. Um, cool. Um, when you're not hacking at the hackathon, uh, which is a surprisingly large amount of time sometimes, <laughs> um, see if there are workshops or meetups with mentors or anything like that. I'm not sure that if that applies to space apps, but it often applies to hackathons that are professional or for students. Um, if there are sponsors, visit them, and not just to collect stickers. Uh, bring your resume if you'd like to, because this can be a great opportunity to be showing somebody what you're actually working on in that moment, and you can form great connections. Um, talk to other teams about their projects. If they seem like they're willing to chat or you meet someone else who's wandering the halls, bounce ideas off each other. Talk about their projects. Um, I think you said cooperation, which I think is a first robotics word, right? They use that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a real thing, and you'll be able to talk to each other about your own projects and get excited if you've been a bit down. Um, should you sleep? Generally, I say yes. Um, if you are tired and cranky, you are not going to write good code. So if you find yourself unable to concentrate, if you find yourself snapping at each other on your team, if you have that really horrible, desperate, overwhelmed feeling you get at four in the morning when you've got a million bugs and you're thinking, I'm never going to figure this out, take 45 minutes, take an hour. Have a little rest. Um, often, 45 minutes of rest is infinitely better than 45 minutes of smacking on the same bug that you've been working on for the past two hours. So keep that in mind. Really think about what is the most valuable thing for you here. Um, when demos happen, um, you want to be calm and alert. You want to have gone over your stuff beforehand, and you want to have gotten some rest. Um, this talks about the different types of demoing. So if you are demoing one by one on stage, which is, I think, how Space Apps works, um, make sure you are ready with what you're going to demo. Make sure you're ready with your laptop, whatever you need to do to present. Um, walk through it. Go. If it's going to be science fair style, which are another type of hackathon demos, you know, everyone sets their own laptop up at a table, and judges and other hackers walk around. That's when you figure out how, who's going to say what and um, talk deeper about your process and your technology. You don't have a whole lot of time if you're on stage, so figure out how you're going to use that best. In this case, you're going to be talking about the challenge that you faced, um, the product that you produced, and also what you're planning on doing it in, with it in the future. After the hackathon, um, if you plan on continuing your project, which we hope you do, Make sure you've done some documentation as you go. Even if you're writing stuff you know, on the bus on the way home or as soon as you get back home, it's a good idea to dump as much documentation, as much idea onto paper into a notepad somewhere so that when you go back and look at it, you'll know what you were intending. Often you come back to a project and you find your, your scary spaghetti code and you have no idea what you're planning on. So writing stuff down with your team at the end is really important. Um, and then take that opportunity to continue. Um, there will be people you meet who might be interested in working with you, whether they are the mentors there or other teams that might have done something similar. Space Apps is a really unique opportunity to continue what you've worked on before 
in a way that is, I think, different from other hackathons, and that's really exciting. Um, you've also learned a bunch of skills by then. You will know about the NASA data APIs, and you will be able to use them again. Uh, that was all I had. So are there questions about hackathons in general? That was really great. Oh, good. Oh, with Unhackathon. Um, so Unhackathon took place in, I think, 2013 and 20, sorry, 2014 and 2015, and was a college hackathon designed to defy expectations about hackathons for college students. Um, at the time, hackathons were tremendously male-dominated. They are tremendously unhealthy in terms of food and sleep and approaches to problems. Um, oftentimes, people would show up. They'd kind of be there to, to collect swag and, and start a project, but if they got stuck, they'd feel fine just giving up. And uh, a number of times, um, a friend and I would, would count teams who started projects versus teams who presented at the end, and it was often down around like 10 or 20%. So many teams just kind of dropped off somewhere in the middle. Um, so our goal with Unhackathon was to bridge some of that gender gap at hackathons. When I was at MHACs, um, we counted less than 6% women, uh, and that was nasty. So we were trying to uh, bridge that a bit just by being welcoming and offering sort of more healthy spaces for things. Um, we had a great system of mentors that helped people to get their projects completed or completed enough to demo. And we also had something called springboard projects, which were sort of, instead of having traditional tutorials where you end up with kind of a final product and then you can't use it anymore, we created a series of tutorials dealing with uh, back-end and front-end programming, game development, um, a lot of stuff with wearable technology because we had all those um, sewable LEDs we did a lot with. Um, and some stuff with hardware hacking that would give you kind of a, a base project that you could then do something really interesting with. So we offered those to students, and uh, they did those on Teams. And we had over 90% of our teams present, and we had 50-50 gender ratio without having to do anything, you know, with regard to selecting people. Um, and it went really well, so that was awesome. Thanks. Yeah, so that, that was on Hackathon. Um, since then, some we put all of our stuff online and other events have done some of the things we've done or used our Springboard project since they're open source, and that's been nice. Oh, yeah. What are some of the good formats for demos? Or some of the good demos I've seen? Um, in general, um, the best demos I've seen do have something working, even if it's small. Um, and they're demos where you can really tell what could happen with a project if they continued with it. Um, so even if you don't have something that is complete, mocking up future screens, writing more about what you plan on doing is really important. Some of the worst demos I've seen have been nothing but slides or have been... Um, demos that are actually fake. Um, I have known students to pretend they have an app working that they can click through, but it is, in fact, basically a slideshow on the web. Um, don't do that. <laughs> we can tell. Uh, that's it.